My name is Mike. Uh, I'm an optometrist, and my Instagram handle is s54 underscore DNA. So my profession, um, I'm Filipino. So the medical field is kind of in our blood, I guess. Uh, initially, was going to be a, going into nursing. Um, my aunt's a nurse. She initially told me I should do it later on. She just said, no, you might not like it. And so then I... Uh, you know, went into physical therapy because that's where all my friends were doing. Um, they didn't too, do too well in the classes. I did fine, but I just really had no passion for, for that. So I took a bunch of tests to kind of see, oh, what's my best career choice? And pharmacy was one of them, and then optometry. Uh, pharmacy was a little too much chemistry and ochem that I really didn't want to do. And my family, we all had bad eyes. so. I was familiar with going to the eye doctor, and so that seemed like a natural step for me to do that. Uh, I probably got into cars at high school, um, early 90s. Here in San Diego, there was a pretty big uh, street racing scene, so um, we had races down the road here a lot that, you know, um, back then it was all, you know, little JDM cars, Civics, Integras, uh, a few RX-7s, but... Um, that's probably when I first thought, you know, cars were cool. And then my cousin moved here from Japan and then he brought all of his cool JDM like accessories and, and style that, you know, because car culture in Japan's, you know, super huge. Um, and so he also influenced me into like getting into cars. So my first car um, was an Integra. Um, I wasn't too much into coupes. I, for some reason, always gravitated toward four-door cars, and so I did get a four-door Integra. The part I liked about it the most, the rear windows, I don't know if you've ever seen the four-door Integra, it would roll down and it had this little notch sticking up. I thought it was really cool. Um, so manual is kind of hard to find in a four-door sedan, and so I actually finally found one. Um, it wasn't fast. I mean, there was no GSR four-door Integra, but uh, it was you know, mainly for, you know, looks back then, you know, import, show off, stuff like that. You know, most of the cars were there just for show purposes, not necessarily track or street stuff. Um, so I was more into the aesthetics of the, the cars. So after um, optometry school, uh, I finally had the money to buy a new car. And so the first car I bought was a E90. Uh, BMW so that's when it first came out the E90s and I thought you know the style was different um, and I thought it was pretty cool so that was my first car unfortunately I, I did get in an automatic which I regretted it right afterwards because it just was not fun to, you know as far as a fun car to drive but um, you know I ended up modding it with you know the MTech kit put some BBS CHs on it and lowered it and you know the normal normal stuff. So what got me into modding, I mean, every car I have, I, I don't initially plan to like mod it, but then, you know, you do one thing, you add a little thing here, and then it just snowballs, and it just keeps going. So, uh, um, you know, initially just a lip, wheels, of course, is first, lowering it, then a lip, and then, then, then just a whole kit, you know, comes on after that, and then, uh, yeah, I just can't stop. <laughs> well, after the E90, um, I was in the Navy uh, as an optometrist, and then I actually got stationed in Japan. So living in Japan, what do you have to get that you can't get here? I ended up buying a R33 GTR with the plans of bringing it back, but um, unfortunately, that didn't happen. It, the car is here now. The guy that bought it from me brought it back, and I still regret selling it because I bought that car for... Seven thousand dollars in Japan, and it's crazy money now. <laughs> it's just, oh, but um, after I left Japan, I moved back to San Diego, and then I bought another BMW. I bought an E60, um, six-speed manual car. I did want the 535, but then the turbos and the high-pressure fuel pump issues. I, I just wanted something reliable for a daily driver, and um, I was lucky enough to find a manual in that as well. Um, so with that car, again, ended up getting an MTech kit, 
learning it, put some HREs on it. <laughs> and so um, I still have that car now, but I rarely drive it because um, commuting wise, you know, over time, yeah, manual's fun for weekends, but daily, uh, sometimes it gets a little bit uh, of a pain in traffic. And so I ended up buying um, a Scion XB and that kind of went back to my, you know, JDM roots in Japan. And so wagon culture, band culture in, in Japan, you know, they have, they love them. I mean, they're, they're really cool. I wish they had Bill Fires here. Um, but the XB, you know, it's a small little, you know, kind of wagon-ish car, <laughs> uh, great on gas, easy, super easy to maintain, um, small, but it's surprisingly roomy inside. And so even with that car, I had to start modding it. So I ended up buying the uh, JDM bumpers hatch. So they're smaller, it's different. In Japan, it's a Toyota BB. And so I got all the parts from Japan um, and put this on this car, um, lowered it and had, you know, this crozeria rear speakers in the, in the windows that light up, um, had the, has TV headrests, uh, got the TRD clear gas cap out of all, all these rare parts in Japan. Uh, unfortunately, I did sell most of it because uh, it started sitting out in the outside because I ended up getting this car and there was no room in the garage. <laughs> Um, so I didn't want it sitting outside with all these rare parts. So I sold most of it, but I still have the car. This car here, um, a friend of mine, Alex, you know, he had gotten hold of this wagon and he had, uh, parts from a donor M3. And so we got to talking and the idea of making this, uh, E46 M3 wagon came about. Um, so this was probably around 2017, 2000 early 2018, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of information out there about how to do these builds. Um, there was a, few, a handful of them out there at the time. And so my, my buddy had a lot more time and, and connections to do this car. So he helped start it out for me. Um, after, so the swap was done, the fender, fenders were done from the M3. Um, interior was done um, with M3 front seats and it got a custom reupholstered. Um, but then after I got the car, you know, of course there was, you know, things that, you know, I needed to improve on and that I, that I wanted to make better. And so I think the first thing I did initially, you know, the car I wanted was probably going to be a OEM plus build. So first thing, you know, a, a new set of wheels. So the first starter wheel, which is pretty common, is the Apex ARC8s that, you know, most, a lot of M3s have. Uh, I got the bronze ones. Um, other than that, then I put the dine -in intake and then just got another nicer strut bar. Um, after that, it did have a tint, but it has an, a beautiful red interior. So. I really wanted to show that off and I, I do like the fishbowl look. So I took the tint off, took the roof rails off to give it a little bit more sleeker look. Um, and then the front bumper, I ended up getting a uh, custom molded uh, status group HR uh, TG lip molded on. So it's not made for the CSL style bumper. So um, David at 2M did a great job at you know, fabricating, molding that onto that, that particular bumper. And then I also uh, bought some OEM M3 mirrors. You know, they don't just bolt on, like nothing bolts on really from the M3. And so I had to like cut and shave and, you know, cut the doors and to get those to work. Um, and then I ended up also putting the M3 trim side markers on because it didn't have those on there. And those don't fit either because the coupe fenders are longer. So the trim pieces, you know, the Dremel is my favorite tool. Like all, a lot of these parts, <laughs> that Dremel, like I use it all the time. Um, put those on. And then um, another thing, I had these rear fenders redone. Um, so I bought another set of M3 quarter panels because the first 
fenders, they just kind of took the flare, but they, they understated a little bit so they didn't go into the door. Um, but yeah, I kind of wasn't uh, satisfied with that. So I bought a new set of M3 uh, quarter panels and had um, them welded on. And that was done by a, a guy named Lauren. He also has a, uh, a black M3 wagon here in, in San Diego, but unfortunately it was recently totaled. So um, yeah, pretty sad, but I think he has another one on the way. So, so we'll, we'll probably get another one out here. I added a little subtle ducktail spoiler on there. Um, you know, there's not a whole lot of options <laughs> for uh, station wagons here and, and body pieces. Um, the uh, wheels, so after the APXs, uh, I sold those and then um, Rogue Engineering did a little mini sponsorship with me and so they gave me a set of their um, Arc 9s and custom uh, painted uh, gold. I had those for a year and then they also gave me their uh, front strut tower bar. Um, so that's still in the car. And I painted that red just to give it a little more pop in the engine bay. And then after the Rogues, I ended up picking up these, uh, you know, Volk, you know, T37 SLs. So these are a square setup, you know, um, 18 by nine and a half. Um, so I do have to use, you know, pretty big spacers to get it to fill out, but, uh, you know, they're easily swappable from front to rear. So I got Porsche brakes, um, I put those on. The rotors are OEM CSL or yeah, rotors. Um, the Porsche brakes are pretty common modification for E46s because it's a fairly easy bolt-on. Um, you just need different brackets and then the front calipers have to be shaved. So Rally Road's a you know, company that most people get those brackets and, and they shave the, the caliper to fit. Um, so I installed those here. A lot of people repaint them and just put a Brembo sticker on it because they are Brembos. But uh, I mean, they were already red, and I, I thought it was fine just to keep it. And the Porsche, you know, people, you know, look at it and they like, oh, so it's a you know nice conversation piece. <laughs> so as far as performance mods, um, now I got the uh, 2M uh, Velocity Sacks in there. So it was a toss up between you know should I go supercharged, turbo. CSL intake um, or these stacks. And so as far as emissions go, California is a pain in the butt. Um, so I figured if I did a turbo or a supercharger, it's kind of a little hard to swap back and forth if I ever need to go to the ref again or smog. Um, and then the CSL intake, nice, um, but just aesthetically, I just thought the stacks looked a little bit cooler. And to them, um, they used to be, you know, down the road from me. So it was super convenient to go over there and pick these up and they installed it for me. Um, other than that, I have status group headers and exhaust. Um, and then that's pretty much it for the performance. So the, the interior um, front seats are from, you know, M3. I think the original plan was it to do a black interior, but you know I requested you know a red because white and red. I mean, how how can you beat that? So, um, Alberta AP upholstery redid these uh, seats. Um, the inserts, you know, we did a perforated uh, leather, just a little something different, little subtle, you know, change. Um, the rear seats, he did stitch the little curve that's in the back, which, you know, wagons don't have that, but M3s do. And then as far as the headliner and, and uh, pillars, uh, we wrapped it in a suede, because um, Alcantara is a little bit expensive, so the suede looks just as good, I think. Um, and then as far as the head unit, um, I put the Avon uh, Event 4 in there, and then I installed the uh, front and rear uh, DVR to record just in case, you know, um, and speakers right now, I'm going to put the Bob sound speakers in there, but eventually maybe a sub, but really when I drive the car, it's more for the sound of the car. I don't bump music too much anyway, so we'll see in the future. So suspension wise, uh, 
currently I, I swapped over the coilovers to some ground control coilovers with uh, camber plates and then I have some rear uh, SPC um, camber arms. So as far as doing this conversion, I mean, unfortunately, nothing just slaps onto this car. So uh, front fenders had to be custom grafted and molded and cut and welded together. So um, two of them did these front fenders because um, they are just a little shorter than a, than, um, a coupe. And the rear fenders also had to be cut and welded onto this car. Um, and then doors pulled a little bit to kind of match that flare. And then the rear bumper also, there's no room for that hatch to open. So you also have to cut that center part of the rear bumper and fix that to accommodate the hatch. Um, as far as the engine swap, I mean, I think that's not as complicated. A lot of people do the, just the engine swap because it does fit fine um, in the engine bay. So subframes were done, uh, swapped over, transmission, engine, everything. That, that's more straightforward than the bodywork is the most complicated part of this car. <laughs> so future plans for the car, um, obviously, Probably new wheels. I mean, like usually every year I, I swap them out. This is probably the longest I've had a set of wheels right here. Um, again, with the modification with the engine performance, I don't know, maybe supercharger turbo in the future just because, you know, there a lot more people are doing them. And, you know, this sounds good, but it, it's not going to beat anybody any kind of race, you know, 20 years ago, maybe. But uh, now cars are so fast. Um, that's probably, and then again, maybe some su uh, sound system upgrades. And then, uh, I don't know, maybe air suspension. We'll see. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just don't know about the maintenance of uh, and upkeep of, uh, you know, Air ride, but uh, it, it's it'd be nice to not have to worry about going up curbs and scratching my ruining my lip and everything. <laughs> yeah, and then when they're parked, when they're slammed, it looks so good. So, <laughs> so this car, would I ever sell it? I mean, I get asked that question a lot, and I don't think so. Yeah, this is probably one of those forever cars. It's you know, it's pretty rare. I mean, you can't just go out and buy one, so you got to build it. I mean, I've had have so much into this car already, so I highly doubt I would ever sell it. I mean, people never really, as far as a offer amount, people never really gave me a straight offer. They kind of asked what would I want for it, and I would just say it'd be crazy money. I mean, you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna, if you're gonna buy this car, you're not gonna want to, you could probably build your own for what I would want for it. I mean, if I were to sell it, I mean, 75K or more, but, you know, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Beamer Invasion for coming out here to San Diego and let me be part of this uh, video series. Um, for the build, you know, I'd like to thank Elix for helping me get this started. My cousin Roel, who's a mechanic, um, for all the mechanical work and advice of how I should proceed with this car. Um, Garage-wise, you know, 2M Auto Works, Rogue Engineering, Euro Auto Spot, Status Group, you know, all of these uh, places help get this car to where it is today. Um, and then, of course, I should thank my girlfriend Lynn for, you know, giving me support and allowing me to, you know, play with this car and, and take time away <laughs> to go to meets and, uh, you know, do what I love with this, you know, car culture. My name is Mike. My Instagram handle is s54 underscore DNA. Um, this is the story of my build. All right, that's a wrap. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, <you killed> <laughs>